Okay, I'd like to open this meeting of the Whitley Select Board, May 30th at 6.05 p.m. Um, first item on the agenda are meeting minutes to look at those, review and vote to whether to approve the meeting minutes from May 9th. Are there any comments or comments? No comments. Okay. To approve the minutes. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, now, same with vendor and payroll warrants, only we don't have to vote. Are there any comments on the vendor and payroll warrants? No. Okay. All right, resuming. Uh, <laughs> at this point, we're at public comment. Um, this public comment time is to listen to comments from the public on anything that's not on the agenda. So if you want to talk about something that's on the agenda, we wait until we get to that. Uh, you're probably 6A. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> oh, they're on, the on the they're on the table on the way in there. Yes, yeah. Okay. But but I think I think you're you're about the zip code, I think. Okay. All right. Um, is there anybody on the Zoom who would like to have some public comment? Chris, anything got anything on your mind? Nope, just at home in between apartments. Okay. All right. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, today there are no scheduled appointments, so that's fast. Uh, for COVID-19, we still have rapid tests available at the town office. Um, you can stop at any time. They're out on the table out front. Okay. On to old business. Uh, so the first item under old business would be to discuss and consider taking actions to change all address zip codes in Waitley to 01093. So uh, I think that you may have some people to comment. If you would be so kind as to come up a little closer into the front row, that would be helpful for uh, sure. for folks to be able to hear what you have to say. I think I can walk without. Sure. Sunday, my back went out. Oh no. Oh, sorry to hear that. But you don't have to stand, you but uh, sure. but just uh, sit closer. All right. There we go. Um, I already submitted one letter. What I did was I wrote another one that addressed every one of Lynn's concerns and what I heard at the parade on Sunday and tried to put it together as a, as a report to you people and make suggestions. I was a reporter for three years, so I listened. And uh, it paid off. I'll start off by saying that I marched in Whiteley, underline Memorial Day parade, as I have done for years. Okay. And I attended the Whiteley Congregational Church. As in the M&M &M Candy and Santa Claus commercial, we do exist the three <clears throat> goats. Okay. As answers to nine areas, Lynn Sibley, these are my answers. My first question, as it was of many people's, why now? We've had 40 years of three zip codes. Why not? Okay. If she has dealt with this problem, she must know how to deal with it. Problem number one. No problem. I got 10 packages this year. And the, the um, FedEx was up the street just a few minutes ago. So they know where we are. Okay. Note if your remittance is late, it's added to the next bill. Insure has a, um, Eversource has a service area on the back side in a square. And it says Waitley Max 01093. So they know where my house is. My bill against mail 01373. It is up to the renter and the owner of the property to make sure accurate information is given to these services. I mean, garbage in and garbage out in a computer. That's what I was always told. My license has Whitley 01093. Again, it's up to me to make sure it's right. The title of my car has a mailing address of South Deerfield. I'm wondering now if I have to get a new title because we have a change of 
zip code. Um, I've been in Whiteley over 30 years. In fact, the property I'm on has been in the family since 1945. Again, given the correct information would eliminate the problems. Uh, let's see. If the proper information from the resident to the RMB is, they're obligated to put in what you tell them. So if they tell them you live on Syracuse Lane, we don't have a Syracuse Lane. So I don't know why, but they, uh, they've got problems. Um, there is on the back side of, of the of registration, there are three areas, your mailing address, your garage address, which means that's where this excise tax comes from. That's where they're set to. And your mailing address is different from that above, okay? So I have been friendly with a supervisor at the RMB for years. And she said, if we did something like that and caused a problem, the person that caused the problem would be reprimanded. They put the wrong information in. So I'm saying, wait a minute, don't put your finger in the RMB. You know, sometimes it, you wait for days for certain things, but I have been over to East Hampton, Greenfield, and the AAA at various times in Hadley, and I've never had any problems. And they also asked me, Again, can you repeat the information that you want put on your license on your excise tax? So they do try to make it as proper as problem. So um, some people said Sunday, and I agree that if we change the 01373 and the 0139 only, that's discrimination. When talking to an RMD delivery person on Saturday, quote, it's going to create quite a mess, delay in deliveries such as medication, and we're going to be blamed for all the problems, not the town fault. People, questions asked, is Waitley going to pay for the late dues whenever source Comcast and whatever are delivered on time? This includes the town, uh, tax bills from the town because you, you, you charge interest. Um, I'd like to know how many excise taxes, bills haven't been collected and has the town office notified the vehicle owners of the problem so they can correct it. Since the zip code process was instituted decades ago, why now? How many towns are involved in the excise tax issue? Does the town of Whiteley have a working agreement with these towns to ensure proper payment? In other words, if we get Sutherland stuff, say, what is the proper etiquette of sending it to Sutherland? Do you wait for two or three bills and then mail it out? Now, okay. I, I personally would like to know um, what authority gives the selectman the extreme power to make the decision without proper input of the public? I didn't know about this um, survey until I read it in the paper that 70% that was asked or were involved in the study and that was that was a quote, and I'm saying the rest of us didn't even know about it. There are some people that don't have computers. The elderly, a lot of them don't have computers, don't know how to access. So the other the other end of the situation is yes, you send out stuff, and sometimes it gets round filed, and I know that. I've done questionnaires. But Give them that chance. And by just saying we're going to change, it's not giving them the chance or saying, well, 70% of the study said it was good. Uh, let's see. Again, 
garbage in and garbage out is 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 everything. In regards to the service business, finding residential addresses are all our suites labeled. This is one of her concerns. And on our assessor's maps, are they updated? Do we have an updated listing of house numbers for a uh, number of footage in order to direct service installations? I have a suggestion. I've seen it in other towns. I've lived in Chicopee and I've lived in Goshen, Winnesburg, and Springfield. Could the highway department buy and place a sign on the street sign? Put it up above, like house numbers 30 to 70. Then you know if you're looking for 45, it's in that group. And it is the landowner's responsibility to post the house and lot number on site so that it, they know where to go. I mean, really. So um, multiple zip codes for individuals cities and towns is statewide. For example, Springfield has four, okay? North Hampton Leeds, two. Williamsburg and Hayville, two. Hatfield and North Hatfield, two. Wellesley, two. Newton, multiple. Chicopee, multiple. Our neighbors in Goshen, Chesterfield, Burlington, and Covington have various mail delivery systems. Bottom line is the RMV knows about these, improved their forms to eliminate the excise tax. The problem is, as many see it, it being ge geographical, and we have to deal with that. Once again, it's the vehicle's owner's responsibility to ensure proper information is given. The RMV has nothing to gain by putting in stupid material. They'll be reprimanded because they could go back and see who did it. So anyways, that's that's some of my concerns. And if you figure out, I had I checked 90 houses, including the loop, the new uh, houses, 90 from my end of the woods to the intersection just to long plain and christian 90 houses now you take two adults in that multiply is that that's 100 and whatever and then you multiply about 50 places we have to change the zip code uh wills uh bank accounts uh checkbooks um medication is being delivered uh, it's it's an enormous task now I'm wondering if the town is going to provide a, a form letter that they can attach to uh, their, their letter or send it on to uh, say, Dr. Smith, my new zip code is this, put it in your computer. Uh, we have people in town that have got nat uh, national contacts. Um, Jimmy Norse is, is United States will no. So I'm saying the letterhead, the town's letterhead, the social security cards, everything has to be. What about birth certificates? Uh, it's, it's, it's an undertaking task. And quite frankly, I'm 78. I can handle it. I've handled paperwork for 42 years. But somebody that's 80 with a slight case of dementia and no one else to help them, we're gonna have a problem. So uh, I don't, and I'm very, very clear on the fact that I know that the people on that side of the Route 91, and there's people that live on this side. And many times, the only time that the nucleus knows that we are alive on this side, is when they want something to be pushed through at town meeting or they want your vote. Other than that, we're not contacted with Diddley. And that is annoying. So I am the I am making a an offer, and I've already checked with the powers to be in my organization that we should have 
a town not meeting informational thing for everybody posting and our organization depending upon my vote of my members probably would be able to post it with refreshments in water and etc but we've got to do it because people it's not fair that they didn't know about it and it's stuffed down their throat so anyways Ruth, we all know you here, but could you just state your name and your address for the record? Yes, Ruth Lady, 18 Long Play Road, Waitley. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I do have a copy of that, of my registration, if you want to look at it. Oh, well, you can hold on to it, okay. Okay. It's got your personal information. No, no, I... Oh, okay. <laughs> But it gets there. It is so easy to follow. I mean, I I really my heart goes out to Lynn if she's dealt with that. But why, after X number of years, is it brought forth now? Well, I can actually answer that. Good. Um, it was brought forth now because uh, the post office has updated and improved their computer systems such that they could handle such a change. They could not handle that change before they had upgraded the computers. But they have upgraded their system and their computers, and that now this is actually a possibility, and not just for us, but for all the towns like us that have split zip codes. Uh, I understand Springfield has four, but those are four that are within Springfield, and they don't share it with Chicopee and Westfield and West Springfield and all the surrounding towns. So it's not quite the same situation. Haydenville has one. Haydenville, I, I understand. And Winnesburg has one. Right. Um, it doesn't matter what those towns have. What we're concerned with is what our town has. And so your first question, why now? I think that's the answer. Um, you you gave a great long list of other things that I wanted to comment on, but um, I wrote them and put stars next to the important ones. I think I'd rather hear with Jane and um, I'm sorry, I don't recognize you, know your name. John. John. I'd like to hear what John and Jane have to say. Uh, before going back to those things. I just have a simple question for you. Uh, how do you write out your license, uh, your uh, address? How do I Is write out one my... line? Is it one line? Yes. I usually put the town on the second line. Put the town on the second line. What do you put on the third line? Well, there's the name on the first, yeah. the street address on the second, right. the town and zip code on the third, and right. the state. So, so exactly. it's, it's three lines for me. Right, there's three lines for me too, all right. 244 River Road, Waitley, South Deerfield, Massachusetts, 01373. And I have never, I don't have a problem with it. I've never had a problem with it. When any, yeah. any, any bills have been made out in that, in that manner. I use oh, okay. so, so you're you're agreeing with Ruth, in, where Ruth says she hasn't had a problem with this, basically. You're saying you don't have a problem getting your mail delivered. As long as it's, as long as it's filled out properly, yeah. there's no problem with it. To, can I clarify for a second? You write both Waitley and South Deerfield, and then the... no, I write the street address down where the street address goes. Yep. Two forty four River Road, Waitley, and then on a line underneath that, where it's the third line, South Deerfield, Massachusetts, or one three seven three. Yeah. yeah. So you put the one town on the second line and one a different town on the third line. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It clarifies that clarifies it for all delivery purposes as well. Yep. Thank you. Could you tell me your name? John Zikowski. I'm sorry, what's the last name? Zikowski. C A I K O W S K I. And what's your address, sir? 244 River Road. Thank you. Wait Lake, South Dakota, Massachusetts. <laughs> okay. I have a question to start with. My name is Jane Banish. I'm at 15 Long Plain Road. Um, and I've been a very happy resident for 69 years. Woo woo. Yes. <laughs> and I have a question. Does the Waitley Central Post Office deliver your mail to your home? No. Okay. Then if they don't. Come on to my home, but they don't deliver to anybody's home because they don't have a truck. So who delivers to your home? <clears throat> Me, personally? Yeah. Um, 
I get it from South Fairfield. Some other people in town get it from Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. And for, well, let's be, I, you, mm -hmm. I have to drop the scoops off at the Williamsburg mm -hmm. Post Office <laughs> to get them to you guys in West Waitley. Yeah. Because the Haydenville Post Office doesn't do that anyway. Got it. I know this from, from being the person who mails the scoop. There are only two options for delivery in our town, and one is South Deerfield and the other is Haydenville. There are some people who have PO boxes in other places, so I have to deal with that as well. But um, but your you question- Do you leave any at your Waitley Post Office? Uh, for the people who have boxes, yes. I leave them at, so at there. That's third. But that's not delivery. That's, you have to come to the post office and pick it up right. yourself. There's no Waitley no. delivery. There's no Waitley delivery. So right. everyone who gets so, delivery gets it. So why service. are we changing the 0173 number, which comes from South Deerfield, to a post office that does not deliver mail? I don't think, well, I don't think they would drop off all of the Waitley mail at post office with no truck. It's just that the people who deliver it the envelope's going to say something other than South Deerfield. You're going to have the same carrier. It's going to still be coming out of South Deerfield. None so of that. If it's of coming change. out of South Deerfield, would we not use a South Deerfield zip code? Well, well why, should, why did that, that number change? Well, did it not change? We're, we're, well yeah, my ahead. other suggestion, and this is probably way out thinking, mm -hmm. um, but since I'm retired, I've got some way out thinking going on. <laughs> Um, I, I would propose that Waitley should have a central post office located near Route 5 and 10, and that it would have a delivery service, and it would be a full-service postal office where you could get your passport done, and you could you know, be an absolute total post office. It's a real, a real and post now office. And on 5 and 10, there's this lovely location that's just sitting there with a parking lot. <clears throat> and perhaps the gentlemen who own it might consider <clears throat> refurbishing and renting it to the town of Waitley. And that would which, be the which lot are you talking about? Lounge. Yeah. Unless they're oh, still oh, thinking they, of doing yeah, oh, Shane, they, you know, they have we, yeah, we, they, that ant land is privately owned. Uh, but, but many post office have yeah. privately owned locations. Right. And they're rented by the owner to the postal yeah. service. Yeah. The town. Yeah. I think a lot of the things you're asking are things that are not in our power. We can't make the post office upgrade our post office to a real post office, one with a truck. I don't think we can force that. And I think it's a moot point to say we're going to change our number. Um, well, there at this point, yeah, there are there are people who would disagree with you on that, and you have given many reasons as to why it is a problem. Well, that, but I, uh, I think we need to investigate further into the town and and open it up to more of the residents because mm -hmm. if you mention it to a resident now, they said. Oh, we didn't hear about that. And I said, the only way I just found a survey today was I said, how difficult will it be for Waitley to change yeah. the zip code? And then the survey popped up. And then there's the survey that I never yeah. saw. Okay. So I'm gonna let a Amy go next. And then I want to address that point because because you both brought it up. And it's one of the ones I put a star. So I just wanted to back up a little bit. You were asking about the delivery. So the South Deerfield Post Office would just basically be like a distribution center. When our mail comes in, it goes to Hartford first, and then it goes to Springfield mm -hmm. and gets distributed, and then it comes up here to get distributed. So it would that distribution is not going to change. Um the the I wish Lynn was here to speak, mm -hmm. to speak more of the impacts of mm -hmm. the, the, I know, I don't want to speak out of turn though, but I know that they have a huge problem with the excise tax bills yeah. with, with the neighboring towns. Yeah. And that is, that is the biggest issue of why she's wanted to change this for so long and why we're doing it now because the post office finally has the capability to do it in an appropriate way. So it's it will be 
I don't want to say seamless because mm -hmm. there's work that will have to be done. And I and I want to touch on something that you said before when we get more into it. Um, yeah. And then yeah, yeah, about about finding out about the survey and that somehow this is a oh, cabal of people trying to somehow secretly change the code of Waitley without getting any public input. I would argue if any of you got the scoop, the front page story on the scoop was all about this. It had the the, yes, the code for so so. I only found out about it a few weeks ago myself, and I found out about it here. Um, then uh, Chris nicely it had it put in the newspaper because somebody hinted that that might be a nice thing for him to do, or maybe he thought of it all on his own and it didn't matter if anybody <laughs> mentioned it. And, um, I, and, and no other... so that in the newspaper. Yeah. Um, and then I said, well, Lynn, would you write something for the scoop? Uh, because I knew the scoop was coming out soon and it was coming out on the timeline so that people would get it before a decision was made. And decision may or may not be made tonight, um, but it should be done kind of in the, the I guess, in, in the short term, sometime in the next few weeks. Well, they yeah. wanted to do it July. They want to do it July 1st. July 1st would work nicely for them, the um, for the post office. If, if, yeah, if, if, Might I suggest if, that if, in some way, is there some way that we, the town of Waitley doesn't have 01093, doesn't have 01373, and gets an entirely brand new number. We don't. It's, I, I, I don't know. I'm guessing that there's not any numbers available. Like, if we go in there and look, my guess is 01090, 01091, 0 I think all the numbers are taken. It's also been on our town. I know a lot of you, you mentioned that not everybody has computer access, but the survey has been on our town website for quite some time on the front page. And I know not everybody is on Facebook, but it's also been posted on our Facebook page as well. If you guys, so if I think Facebook, an informational meeting right, right. But would be amazing, but it's hard. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's, if you, like an informational meeting sounds fantastic. It's hard to get word out to everybody because how many mediums are, are you mm -hmm. going to use to try to reach it? And you still won't reach everybody. Even mm -hmm. But a good percentage. Right. Well, I mean, it was in the newspaper and it was then, in the school. And the scoop goes to 100% of the households yeah. in Whiteley. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you, you didn't get your scoop? That one that had the front page, no. You, did you, you we got one in the last two days. Yes, that's how it, it's you've gotten it, and the article was not on the front page. Yeah, you have to go past the historical society newsletter part and well, the front page of the scoop. I know it was beat up, so, <laughs> oh. so well, well, you, then you then you can't say it wasn't on the front page of your scoop. I can't so, say that, but my scoop right. didn't have the front page there. But, okay, but it, so I don't understand that, but. Um, there's, I'm telling you what we did to get the word out about this, okay? Because I don't want anybody walking away from here thinking that oh, we just, we're going to post on this website and we'll do whatever we want um, because we went to a lot of effort to do that. It's the entire first page of the scoop. It is the entire first page. So every single household gets the scoop and most of the time, it's not so beat up that the, I mean, that's a page that's on the inside. It's not on the outside. I don't know how the inside got beat up. It was um, unsealed and everything. So it might have gone through the machine. I don't know. They don't, yeah. They don't ever go through machines. The scoop does not go through any machines. So anyhow, the, don't, I, I'd say, I just really want to make sure that, that you understand, because I think, you know, you're an, an important, you are you are a part of many important organizations in addition to being an important person yourself. And uh, I don't want you thinking that we didn't try to get a hold of everybody. It might be that you only heard about it in the last couple of days. That's true because the scoop only came out roughly, what, a week ago? Five, six days. Yeah, yeah. something like that. So, so that's certainly not, I'm not surprised that you may not have heard about it until recently. But I hadn't heard about it until recently. Um, we talked about it at the last Board of Selectmen's meeting. And there you can, you maybe that's where you heard 
the, the list of things that Lynn mentioned, they're also listed in this scoop um, as bullet points. It's a little faster probably to find it that way. So that was the one thing I really wanted to make sure you got. I've got a whole nother list of things, but I've been talking a lot. I should let somebody else. Is it a, a possibility that you could have a informational meeting? Let's brainstorm about how to get. I, I like the idea of an informational meeting. Yeah. I really do because I, I think I know it's it. I'm a lot the bridge, and we do community service. Yeah, and we either could stuff envelopes for you. I even know how to run them through the mailing. I, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lot of us. We <clears throat> Well, that was uh, that's that's an avenue that we go down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm inclined to think at this point that it, it the news has gotten out to the population recently enough that the decision should not be made by us tonight. That's true. Because people are going to have a variety of responses and we want to be, you know, we are at your service. We don't and need we, to be backsided. Yeah, we yeah. want to be. We want to hear what everybody right. has to say. I if think it, if it had been out there for two months and people hadn't responded, that would be a different story. But if some yeah. people only got it within the past yeah. five days, that's a pretty quick turnaround. Yeah. I'd say that let's try to get, if it's possible, yeah. to brainstorm about an informational meeting, and if it's possible, within a reasonable time constraint and budget constraint, to get postcards out to everybody and just say, if you want to show up. This is what we're doing. We're going to have information about, you know, yeah, folks want to want it to right. happen, yeah. and we want to take questions from the audience, and we want to have a discussion. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a great idea. Because I think there are answers for all the questions you put in here. Yes, and um, I'd be willing to come up and help. I mean, that's I'm fantastic. Retired. That's fantastic. That's great. You retired, so you have nothing yeah. else you have to do. Yeah, nothing else to do. Well, I can tell you, I'm putting Waitley on the map. I'm having the National Range Master at my house on the 17th of June. Oh, very good. Wow, cool. Very good. That's cool. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. that's quite a right. honor. Yeah. So, no, yeah. I, I am a retired medical records director right. and deficiency free yeah. for 12 years. I know how to get things yeah. done. So right. if you want to have a decision made in time to give something to the post office by July 1st, we would want to be able to make a decision by um, let's look yes. at a calendar. Uh, probably our second meeting in June, which would be our next meeting. Yeah, June. I mean, my sense is that that the, the 13th. July 1st election. isn't any magical date oh, right. for the post office. Um, um, so okay. obviously they're not going to do it. Yet. Right. We don't ask them to do it. Amy, so, right? do you yeah. have labels to go on postcards? Or yeah. You... Okay. And I can feel Bob. <laughs> My yeah. only concern is that I'm these in elections right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah. not gonna have time. And and we're and down by we're down by two system. people in the office. We've got no administrative assistant well, and no uh what? Because I don't have an assistant. There's oh I'm technically the administrative assistant okay. still yeah. and whatever I can do. We're, we're down by two you're folks, I think. Do you have yeah. folks, folks other folks at the Grain who are available or in other organizations? I can ask Ophelia and say next door was the secretary. She's okay. retired. Okay. Lors. So there's three of us. So we could feel and flop and run it to the post office if you guys need the help. I mean, yeah. We, I, I think if it's going to happen soon, you need to set a date. But we got to set a date. Yeah. Yeah. So an informational meeting needs to be set up right now. Right. right. Because you need that information. But my only concern is. I think so. Lynn is per the person that really yeah. spearheaded this. Yeah, the person who and would have the has answers. all the information, and I think we would really need to talk with her yeah. before we set anything in stone. Yeah. I know that she'll be in tomorrow, so it's definitely a discussion that we can have. Yeah. We just yeah. like I'm not comfortable setting anything. Right. Well, you should have never had Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should, yeah, but look, could, could we aim for something that at least happens in June? I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. see much. I, I have a meeting at my house on the 8th of June, and I can bring it to the body because I can't win without a vote either. 
Yeah. So I know the rules. But so, they have to vote for you to help yeah. stick and slap. Stick and slap. Peel and flop. Okay, so we're looking at something like the second or third full week of June, in all likelihood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And that's in time for our last meeting of the month if we come up with something conclusive. Right now, the input we have, honestly, it's 160 people. We don't know if any of those are duplicates because it's an internet poll. It has all the problems that internet polls have. Um, and, you know, people could go in with three email addresses and just do it three <laughs> times or something. Yeah. Um, don't email me because there's a virus and I'm locked right. out. Oh. Even if the yeah, even if the 160 are different individuals, that's only 20% of the households in Waitley. Right. That's 10% of the population, 20% of the households. So, so just a suggestion. Is there a way that we can get more people in town to give you their emails? To I don't need the, I don't want to be the collector of emails for no. that. that yeah. That's no. too that's much that's work. That's uh, personal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, um, a, that's it, a big understanding. That's why you post the postcard. Postcard. I mean, people come to the informational meeting and they get information and we can get a sense of the room if people feel like their questions have been addressed. Um, I think one of the things you'll hear there is that it might be that Ruth has not had a problem getting 11 packages this year. I have a problem once or twice every year that the package arrives somewhere else. And I've been really lucky that I've had people at those places who look me up in the phone book or wherever people look me up and they call me and they say, I think I have a package of yours at my house. And they give me their address and I drive over and go get it. Okay. So just because one person doesn't have a problem doesn't mean it's not a problem for somebody else. For, for somebody yeah. else. Especially and residents on River Road because there's a river that's Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a problem. And then so is is the, the confusion the old one three seven three is that your zip code? Uh, sometimes it gets returned back to the company because it, they they say there's no Westbrook Road in South Deerfield. Yeah. That but address it, is not right. Is that the zip code that you use? Um, well, let's see. If you use FedEx, you should you need to use O one O nine three, and if you use UPS, you have a delay of a day. If you don't use 01093, but they'll often get it there a day late. Um, and if you go to, I can't tell you how many problems I've had with packages that are related to the zip code. And I think you're, you're absolutely right, Ruth, that garbage in, garbage out is a problem. But the garbage in comes from people who are freaking confused. When I first got to this town and I was, and I looked up the zip code, Waitley 01093, told all my family, uh, and I get to the post office and they say, no, your zip code isn't 01093, you're South Deerfield. So somebody said, do I live in South Deerfield now? I didn't, is Waitley a part of the South Deerfield now? There's, there's a lot of confusion around that. So a confused person going to the RMB may well be a completely unintentional source of the garbage in part, yep. of garbage in, garbage out, okay? So I don't like blaming the victims. And I sort of feel like saying that, oh, all you have to do is this one thing that's not very obvious. I don't, I don't think that's a good solution myself. I think we have a chance to sort of do what they should have done however many years ago when they sorted out the post offices and decided there's not going to be a trend in weekly. All the mail, all that, both mail is coming from River Road and all that. It's going to go to the post office up on the hill. Sit there no. for a couple of days. No. Down no. no, 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 no. no. no the, the flow is not going to change. The flow of the mail is not going to change. It's just that things will arrive at the South Deerfield Post Office that say Waitley 01093, and they will say, oh, that's Waitley. And they put it in the, the, the route that serves that is served by Waitley. It serves, sorry, served by South Deerfield for Waitley. Okay. That, that that's all my documents. I have to go change them. I think that's to me. That's the, yeah, the that's most. Like, that's my, I mean, my 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 yeah. head. My, my, my well, head see, because... all you have to do is stop putting. <laughs> you can put Waitley on the third line now. With uh, oh, I, I, I have no problem. I've had no problem my whole life doing. It. Yeah, I I understand that you haven't had a problem doing it that way for you, but what you've done is not obvious to everyone. It's not, it's not obvious that you should put two names of two towns in your address. 
And it certainly wasn't for me. It's very obvious for the fact that you have a street address. So when you fill yeah. out, if you, yeah. live, if, you, if you live in Northampton, you fill out your street address, and then it's Northampton. Right. But you don't put whatever your address is, Northampton, and then put Northampton Mass. Right. You don't write Northampton twice. You don't put the name of, you don't put two town names in. And I um, think that's not obvious. Well, but, some but, people do because <laughs> it's Lawrence Northampton. So, and and they uh, have their own zip code. Yeah, it's Florence. Florence has yeah. its own zip code. They're just distributed by Northampton, but Florence has its own zip code. Yeah. So there's three in that town. Yeah. Leeds is part of it. Yeah, they, that, that I think was not the case 10 years ago, but they got their zip code back. Um, so, you know, I, I, all I'm saying is, John, just because it's not a problem for you doesn't mean it hasn't been a problem for other people. And uh, and specifically, all these things that Lynn tells us about that she's got to do to get the excise tax and have bills rebuilt. Um, that's all, I mean, maybe eventually we get all that money, but I would really much rather have the staff at the office doing things that serve our town better, like writing more grants so that we can fix our ailing infrastructure. I really would rather not have them tied up with busy work related to the zip code of our town causing tax money from our town to go to a different town. It just, I, I think it's a, it's going to be a little bit of a heavy lift <laughs> to start. We would have a full year of mail forwarding for people to get their address change in order. So, uh, so every time you get something in the mail, do I want them to have my new address? Yes. Do the change of address. If you don't want them, don't change the address. What will right? that do it, it, to all of us who have gotten our real ID? It, no, your real ID has to have Waitley on it. That's the thing. And that's where people have had trouble getting real ID because when they went to the RMB, somebody told them they lived in South Deerfield, 01373. So they didn't have one with their real physical address on it. So if your real ID says South Deerfield Mass, then you got through. It's also a, a census and a voting issue yeah. as well. A lot of the information that comes from the census no, ends up, it does it with me. Ends up yeah. going to into under Deerfield and South Deerfield yeah. instead of being attributed properly to Waitley. Yeah. And is that the with problem that, with taxes? Do they go to South Deerfield? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. And that can but potentially yeah, lose the town a lot of money because the state gives money on your population and things like that. Deerfield and South Deerfield look like they have a greater population if you just go by zip code. Than oh, right. yeah, Isn't yeah. there also something yeah. about some fairly wealthy people in an adjoining town who get attributed wrongly to our town? And so they, we are come up uh, looking wealthier. It, I think they get attributed in, yeah. on, on official things. Right? The, state, the, 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 state is, the state is pretty good about knowing what is in. Okay, which, all right. right. I just, but, but, but even so, I was flying with an unsubstantiated rumor. Please yeah. strike that. <laughs> but, but still, remember back in the pandemic and they were talking about, oh, which towns have high vaccination rates? Oh, yeah. Well, they were saying Buckland has practically nobody vaccinated. Oh, because most of the people have Shelburne zip codes. Yeah, they were going you know? <laughs> because so many other things that matter depend on the zip code. And every time there's something where we have to go back and uh, correct that, uh, in, who knows? It, it, how it, 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 I, I'd like to take a little exception because I think that unofficial things, which are the things that really matter, whether it's federal or state, they're pretty good about I, where we are, the we unofficial things like oh, I would argue I, we don't really know. We we keep getting things sent to the wrong place. So <laughs> I think all of this is going to end up being a balancing act of yeah the benefit, particularly to the town, in straightening things out against the inconvenience to yeah. people. And one group of people that hasn't taken into account here are small business are the business people. Yes. The business people are going to have to change business cards and letterhead and contact vendors and customers, some of whom 
they don't have full lists and it could be years between when they purchase from someone right. and have the wrong address. I, I, I understand. And, 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 that, and it will be an expense for them to make all these changes. So I have, I can't speak for all business owners, but I've had three come in and they're for this change because it's, it's so. because the 01373 is a headache for them. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's a balancing act because there are costs to it. Yeah. yeah, there's pluses and minuses. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, and and but the one other thing that I started on here was, um, and if if you watched our last meeting on uh, on FCAT, uh, you'll know we ended our discussion with the idea that hey, you know, there are going to be people who need help doing all this change of address. And we ought to think about what we can do to support that. Right. And we didn't have anything specific at that point because we hadn't made the decision and we were still at the point of, hey, let's get the word out about this in the scoop. Let's get more than six responses to the, <laughs> uh, to the online survey. Um, but that was that from the start was part of the conversation, um, being able to have uh, ways to support People who don't, like it's easy if you're good at a computer sometimes to change a lot of those addresses online, but if you don't have a computer, it's not. Right. And, uh, and from the senior center said yeah. that they would be more than willing to right. help our, our older population change sure. everything. So that's great. So it does, I think to me, that's the hardest part is that it puts a burden on a lot of individuals. Um, and in the end, it will be better for them, but you got to get through that like year of filling out all the change of address uh, documents for anything that you care about in your mail. Uh, so and I'm sure the junk mail will find you. That's, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'll leave you with a bit of information. My grandfather was a RFD delivery person in Waitley, uh, Williamsburg. He did it on horseback, sleigh, and car. <coughs> and his post office sorting machine is in the Historical Society. If you go into the Williamsburg General Store, right in from the ice cream place is a, a indentation in the floor, and that's where it happens. Stand and sort mail. And he delivered chickens and ducks, and Dr. Snook to set a leg in, a, in an accident. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, it's a little. Thank you for your time. Yes. Well, thank, well, thank you. you for bothering to come and to have input on this because yeah. you know we, we if nobody comes we don't hear anything and it's it's really hard to make good decisions when Does you don't have come the information. Down to the postal service to approve of this if we ask them to do it they'll do it at this point <laughs> uh, but they wanted something from something official from the government and we're about as official as it gets so that's why this, I don't think this is in the selectman's job description. You get to design the zip code. <laughs> It'd be nice, but uh, it's not. I think I think that's does that sound about right, Brian? Yeah, that was the conversation. Yeah. Amy, do you have my telephone number because you won't be able to get me on the No, I'm not your email. Okay, why don't do you have the ability to write it down and then um, give it to me? And I'll definitely be in contact. No, I'm quite sure that I can render some services for you. That would be amazing. That would be, yeah. I'm retired for yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in your yeah, travels, if you can recruit um, a new, we need an assistant town administrator, a, uh, a administrative assistant, uh, and assistant. we need an assistant town clerk. Yeah. And community <laughs> that, that's the assistant. That's the assistant. Yeah. Right. And, and, and director. And direct. I'm going to we should make him a director. Community you know. development. Ah, coordinator. Right. Coordinator. Right. Yeah. Well, they didn't come to the Brown Thank Island you. Record too, but I didn't Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Jane. You. Thanks, John. Thank you. Yep. That was my nickname. What was your nickname? Rockweiler. Rockweiler. <laughs> Records. I, I was different. Oh, first. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sorry, it's on a poor man's paper. That's okay. But it was a good parade the other day. Mm. And Joyce, thank you for your contributions. Oh, uh, you're very welcome. Did you dance? We did get a no. couple new members. <laughs> no, they have a scholarship. We got a couple of new members for the grant. Oh. 
Yeah, I think Jane is a relatively new member, right? Jane? Jane, yeah, relatively new. September of last year. Yes. She's awesome. Yes. I guess I'm saying that. It's on, it's on record. Chris, I'm willing to go on record. Jane is awesome. <laughs> She'll appreciate Okay. That. All right. Well, it sounds like Thank we you. will consider taking action later. The idea is, though, that Amy will work on a date for a public meeting and wrangle the Grange to help. Um, with the physical work and getting the uh, card, uh, a, a notice out to everybody on a postcard. Mm -hmm. So look for that postcard in your mail, folks. Um, and it would be a chance to ask questions of the people who know the most about the problems um, and about what we can do to help people with solutions. You could probably tally the results and give it to the post office. Then X number really want it, and we have the back it. Yep, and uh, yeah. yeah, but I think Amy would design the postcard once you've got a date settled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it could even put the the internet poll on there, although we know to take yeah. that with a grain of salt. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Thanks for okay. your time. Uh, Thanks, Ruth. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. I'm going into my 16th year as master. Uh, All right. I appreciate your Good night, night, Master Ruth. Okay, all right, we're down to 6B now. Um, next item is to discuss and vote whether to obligate or rescind coronavirus local fiscal recovery funds. And here we're talking about some very specific things. I don't wanna get them wrong. So I think I'll turn it over to Brian. Yep. Yeah. So I did the share screen. Um, because, <laughs> there we go. Because we tabled the um, Warren article that appropriated money out of the um, the agency fund for the ambulance. Um, yeah. The request is that we amend the previous vote. Um, that the select board took for CLFRF monies to $45,025.42. That would, that would make that yeah. Yeah. Um, whole and that would authorize scams to um, move forward with that ambulance purchase. I did, uh, I did get an email from Zoe that they're kind of waiting to hear back from us as to okay. whether there's been a full appropriation made so they can move ahead. Yeah. So the 44, 44941 is the new number, 42,000 is the old number. Uh, and the difference is not quite 3,000, it's $2,941. Because the, yeah, some of those, the 4502, uh, the 40. So under E, uh, sorry. No, it's done. Down, down, oh, down, down the bottom right. Bottom, oh, sorry, 38. It's 6,000. 45,000. Oh, okay. Oh, so that, okay, sorry. Yeah. I was, uh, I just said all the wrong numbers. Don't quote me <laughs> those, anybody. Um, so down here, so the new number of what would come from CLFRF money is. Forty-five, oh twenty-five point forty-two, which is up yep. approximately six thousand dollars from the original thirty-eight nine seventy-six and zero cents. Okay, good. I just want to make sure we're clear on what we're voting. Um, and I think that makes perfect sense to do that. I would agree. Do we move? I, I, I think why don't we do this one, one at a time rather than oh, okay. Group. So you want to start with yeah. motions? Yeah. I just want to get it. Okay. Um, I move that we uh, allocate an additional $6,049.42 from CLFRF money to the ambulance project. Second. Okay. Um, any more discussion? No, seems to be okay. sense. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then, and then there were some other ones. Yeah, right? the second part was uh, for the board to consider, um, I guess we would be obligate or we're singing votes for PPE testing. So it was this uh, 1A under response. Uh, one, yeah, are the PPE and testing. The amount obligated was 5,000. The amount that has been spent has been zero. And also for the 
two, so two is recovery, A, water merger income qualified financial assistance, 5,000 5, was obligated, zero has been spent. That one certainly we don't anticipate spending any money on. Um, so if the board wanted to either vote to close out those projects or to rescind the previous votes, it would you know, return that $10,000 back to the unobligated. Okay. Plan. Which is PPE and testing is for COVID. That was COVID. COVID yeah. testing and COVID. Yeah. So that, got, that, that was the first thing that got allocated out of that money as COVID yeah. was going on. Yeah. It was thought to be uh, rapid, rapid response money, right? It, yeah. We didn't have to wait yeah. how many ever weeks for the next select board yeah. meeting. It was the Board of Health could use it. Yeah. And we never used it. That's uh, the state. I mean, the state eventually. Eventually, stepped in and provided a lot of, a lot of masks okay. and testing yeah. and yeah. tests yeah. and stuff like that. So, so we didn't need to. Yeah. And if we vote to rescind or close out, that money goes. I know you just said this, but I'm asking it would just be go back to the unobligated. The unobligated. So we'd add ten ten thousand to the. Which we then and what is the do? What is the final date? Of us needing to obligate all the money. December thirty first, right? Uh, next year of twenty twenty four. Right. So we still obligated by December thirty first. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And again, really, if I mean, the water merger income qualified financial assistance, that was a time sensitive right, opportunity that would, for people yeah. with, with related to the hookup fees and the center right. account. So that's really passed. And yeah. by old PPE and testing is passed. Mm -hmm. um, but again, if, if it's it not, we can do it again. Then you can do it again. Yeah. Right here. You know, okay. Calculate the money. Uh, all right. Well, I would move that we, uh, what what, is, what would be the appropriate? They can either rescind or close out. Close out the water merger income qualified financial assistance right. and return the money to the CLFRF. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And I will move that we rescind the allocation for PPE and testing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Wait, Brian, what's the story on the elementary school flooring? Um, so that, that's actually a question that I wanted to, to talk about. Um, well, initial one to talk about. So we have a second project for one replacement. And I anticipate that I would get the question of um, <laughs> could we use can we use the additional this? money? I so, right. So K. So project two K is oh, look one replacement. It's ten thousand. Because they're you know, because they're doing it all the stuff in phases. So yep. um uh. I couldn't. It's possible I could get that question on. Oh, okay. well, well, the flooring payment at whatever eleven thousand dollars. Can I just use the other money? I don't know what I would say. Hmm. Well, what should I say? Um, I think that would be an easy vote for us to take. This is happening. This uh, item K, and that's happening this summer too. So it will be something we know about relatively soon. Um, I would. I would imagine they're going to do it over the summer. I wouldn't think yeah. they're going to do it over the summer because it's pre-K yeah. bathrooms. Well, I, I would think we should rescind the first funding or whatever is left. The 4731. Yeah, the 4731 29, just to avoid any ambiguity. It was just obligated for a specific project. That project has been completed, even though a similar a project that's similar in nature is ongoing. It's not the same project. And I think we, if they're over by a thousand bucks, we could probably find out. Or we can quickly. We, yeah, we, this, well, we this, this is from this quickly, uh, yeah, that, that's what I really yeah. want to find. Is this money that can be obligated at any point? By us without by the town meeting. Yeah. Without the town meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is that's what's special about this money. This is that hour. Thank you. We don't generally, we're not generally able to do this. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> think so. I was like, but, but, but. 
Okay, yeah. so we would we would vote at this point to rescind the leftover and then see what happens. Or if, we're not rescinding a vote, so I guess this would be closing out. So closing out the account and the, then see what happens and if they need anything else and figure out where it comes from. Yeah, and it could come from the unobligated CLF RF yeah. I'd be inclined to do that. Okay. Um, along the same lines, there seems appears to be another thousand eighty six. Um, library door replacement. Is that I'm reading the line? Yeah, I, I need to. I need to follow that, up with No, you. that's the software. I'm sorry, but you're wrong line. That's the, the tractor. That's the treasurer collector yeah. software. Yeah. Fine. But yeah, I would, the, these other ones I'm not so comfortable at this point saying they're okay. completely done. Oh, okay. Um, the, the, okay, it's just, it says it's complete. So. Oh, the financial oh, software. Yeah. Well, let me let me double check. Okay, yeah. let me double okay. check. There's no urgency in doing that. Yeah. All right. So okay. that means we'll check on that and maybe take that up the next Yeah, week. I'll check on all because okay. okay. So I, I want to say yes on some of these. I think they're probably they're probably set, but let me just double. Um, okay. Well, are we doing anything on the flooring, or are you just holding that open? The right. um, line B. I'm more confident that that one is that, that one is done. That one's done. So we can take we take can it. take action on that one and okay. stay in your comfort zone. So I'll move that we deallocate four thousand seven hundred thirty-one dollars and twenty-nine cents, which was obligated for the Wigley Elementary School floor replacement, and return that project number one yeah. to available CLF RF funds. I second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, and then we'll take a, a second look at this in the next meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. Sign stuff. So we're on page two. All right. And so we got some new business. First item is to discuss and vote whether to approve slash slash sign the election warrant for the election to be held on June 13th, 2023. My first one, rejectable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does that, let me ask you, does it list everybody? Is this all, all we're voting for? Yeah. Okay, all right. That's, I think that's the most important thing about this. <laughs> it's gotta list everybody that you're voting. And town clerk is for the full term, it's not to complete non expired What's that? Is the town clerk it's term. two years. It's two, two years. years not the Finishing okay. Right. Okay. Finishing so. Is this your pen? No, mine. There we go. It's not mine. No, but <laughs> oh. I remember okay. several years back, we left, uh, inadvertently left the uh, Frontier School Committee off. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh no. no. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Do we need to vote that for signing this? I think it would. Yeah. I think it was the email. Yeah. You take that? I move that we. Approve and sign the election warrant for the election to be held on June 13th, 2023. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 In pro correct. Anybody listening, um, the polling place will be, town offices in the hours will be 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And what's um, early voting in? Early voting is June quiz 5th time. through June 8th. From 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the tunnel offices for Sandy Lane. Okay. And if you have to vote earlier than that, you've got to do an absentee. Yeah. Yep. Did absentee you mention that the date is June 13th? Yep. That's the good. last day to register for the to vote in the election is June 2nd. I will be here. It is a Friday. I will be here from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and then 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And that's unusual on a Friday for someone to be here, so that's important. To yeah, yeah. Um, it's the way you have to do it specific amount of days before the election. That so falls on the Friday. Okay. All right. Good. Um, maybe we can we can take this um, off the share screen. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so interesting. I mean, who would want? And put the fiscal compensation rates up. Right. They are also quite interesting. 
Right. So All right. So the next item is to, to review, discuss, and vote whether to approve wages and salaries for fiscal year 2024. And then it's a really cute one. It's really, really small. Oh, I printed out a big one myself. Oh, thanks, Brian. I'll bring it out. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Okay. So um, these are elected positions. These were approved at the um, you know, town meeting. Um, so the select board deals with employee positions. These are the primary positions, administrative, highway, and let us go down to the library. Um, Water superintendent voted on by the water commissioners, um, mm -hmm. assessors, police, full time officer. Um, actually, we should fill in the full time office. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, so I think we know that at this point. Yeah. And then these are the really the part time positions, right? Um, let me stop sharing for one second so I can look back to see what she Sabine had recommended for the. Yeah, I was wondering if I might have that somewhere on my computer and I don't uh, know what we'll do. She had a recommendation for that. Right. And I think you, you might have it because you can find the finance committee stuff faster than I can. I'm going to draw on the gear. And I know he sent it to us because all right. So in the job posting, it was forty-eight thousand eight hundred. It's a starting salary. Forty-eight thousand eight hundred. Okay. The uh, full time police officer. Yeah. I just wanted to watch it. Yeah. Not sergeant. Not sergeant. Yeah. Right. We will no longer have a sergeant after. No sergeant. July, right? We'll have. Starting July. Starting, I guess, July 1st. Okay. Back up. And we will not have a sergeant anymore. Correct. Yep. Oh. And we will have how many full time officers? Uh, two full time officers plus the chief, who's also a full time. Yeah, not just people under right. that. 
under that category. But the budget includes two full time operating positions. That was not the town meeting. <laughs> okay. Spoiled so we're basically to voting to approve what the town meeting has already approved. Yes. And what we voted to approve at town meeting ourselves. Right. So town meeting approves the the budget. The budget. The total yeah. line item and then budget. We're and then approving the specific right. allocations. Yeah. Okay. So again, these yeah. are based off recommendation yeah. from the approved by the finance committee and recommended by the personnel committee. And these amounts at those hours are included in the budget amounts. It's just sort of a yeah. reaffirmation of. Uh, are there any questions or further discussion on those? No. no. I will move. We approve the compensation rates as submitted by the town administrator. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, the next uh, item is to discuss about whether to approve a proposal slash contract from the Bath Energy Group. For weatherization work at Wayne Elementary School to bring communities grants funding that. And I think I looked through that when uh, earlier this afternoon. I have a couple questions if anybody else has knowledge about blown in cellulose. Um, yeah, I we have it in our home and granted our home is not representative of the school, but it's problematic. It causes a lot of dust. It means that the space that it's in, you can't go in and do anything. Like if you need to replace a light bulb in the attic where there's three feet of blown in insulation, you have to wade through the insulation to do it. Um, wondering if there it is potentially going to pose any problems at the school or if that's been looked at. And it's it can get damp and grow mold and mildew. Um, and if there's open ducting, it can get in the ducts and blow into public areas. So the I've been up in that attic, unfortunately, several times. Yeah. <laughs> um, I believe they already have cellulose up there now uh -huh. um in, in most areas i believe it's it's um it's a ceiling and then there's a drop ceiling mm -hmm. um that's it in, in much of the uh over much of the school so um if you go into the attic there's a lot of like plywood walkways that are over the existing installation already okay um so I, i'm pretty sure that's what they have up there now okay um so we'll just be adding to that. Um, that's about yeah, all. That's yeah, about about so, okay. so you wouldn't have to walk on the cellulose to right. go change a, a light bulb. A light bulb through through it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like the sprinklers come down through to the drops. They come down through this other ceiling down into the drop ceiling. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's where all the electrical and You know, this is. This is this uh, green community grant funded, and we have a proposal from a different group mm -hmm. um, that we weren't comfortable going forward with because they were to provide even a basic table like this of what they were going to do. Mm -hmm. It was basically, well, we're going to do air sale and insulation at X amount of dollars. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And despite my insistence on having some more detail and really simple detail, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. They, they couldn't provide it. Yeah. Um, so, and we talked about, so there's the UMass Energy Audit um, that we had done a couple years ago, oh, probably. Yeah. yeah. She's on three or four years ago. I mean, the best solution for the elementary school is to spray foam the underside of the roof, mm -hmm. the underside of the roof deck. Yeah. Um, but the cost that we had of doing that were over half a million dollars. Uh -huh. um, okay. So the question is, what's sort of the next best? What's the next best alternative? Um, and that's what that's sort of what they talked about in the in the energy audit. There was um, to try to do the best you can with insulation and air sealing, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that it's very expensive to 
complete the whole outfall in, in the building. Yeah. Um, it's really broken up up above. Um, it was different walls protruding through. There's uh, several half finished uh, utility rooms that house the air handlers mm -hmm. um, in the attic. Um, it's not a simple building in terms of. Right. Um, and, you know, the, I did wonder about the cost. I did wonder if that was the reason that it wasn't all going to be spread this way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, the energy had to talk a lot about air sampling. Yes, yeah, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. I mean, there's some focus on that, but you talked about the building's real problem is that there's a stacking effect that happens. Um, mm -hmm. That the, the, the hot air comes in the, in the ground floor and then it goes up through the, you know, because there's not a, there's not an air barrier, a uniform air barrier. It goes up, it goes through the roof, and then that's why they have cold air infiltration around the windows, around the doors. Um, so I, I, this will make it better, but I don't think it's going to solve everything. Mm -hmm. um, what, what it will do is it will make us eligible for additional green community mechanical grants in terms of the boiler. You know, the boiler was original to the building, so it's 1990, so we're going on 30 something years with yeah. the boilers. Um, so gets us further, but uh, there's still more work that would need to be done in the building for sure. Thank you for all yeah. of that information. Yeah. I appreciate you. It's... And, and then uh, if I could just take one more minute, you know, the, the schools had a, had a capital request for air conditioning um, really for the past two years now. And I think the issue that the, the, the capital committee had in Fred Young Capital Committee yeah. Was that there was no sort of uniform approach? We know that the boiler needs to be replaced, mm -hmm. right? And we know that they want a air conditioning, but it was sort of like, well, we'll just, and the boiler has an energy management system, which was a previous green communities grant, mm -hmm. and everything was just piecemeal. It was, we're going to put mini splits here, 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 here. And nothing was unified or, 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 there was no plan. Or, yeah, there, was there was no plan. The, the plan was, well, we got a 30 something year old boiler. Maybe we can make it smaller because we have the units, um, or maybe we can downsize, you know, the size of the of the boilers. And it was uh, the capital committee was really just wanted a unified plan like for the, heating and yeah. cooling of the building. And maybe a well thought out plan right. and right. with, with the reasons why you do this instead of right. have a professional and do. And the committee didn't really care that while well, they have five mini split units already installed, you know, in the office, the library was. So it's not a good reason just to throw them up everywhere else. And right. I could just imagine there's times when the units are cooling and the boilers going, or I could that's what I would just picture. But um, there, there's still a lot of work to be done, I think, in that building to make it energy efficient. Mm -hmm. But I mean, those the mechanical systems are coming up on the end of their they mm -hmm. probably past past their yeah. useful life. So definitely. looking at the building as a whole, yes, would yeah. be and without doing the under roof insulation, it's never going to be as good as it should be, but it still needs more of an overall look rather than a piecemeal look. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this would okay. fit. This proposal is acceptable to the board. Um, that would be good. That is the accurate uh, virtual gas rebate. So we'll get a rebate of $9,618. And the green communities will cover the, the $77,270.49. So it won't be any out of pocket costs now. Oh, that's, that's nice. I should have said that up front. Yeah. And the, uh, the, their building superintendent, the district's building superintendent, has looked at this. Yeah. And was. He's in favor. He was in favor of it. Yeah. We met there. We can have to go, I think, to talk about it. Okay. And he's the yeah, yeah. energy group has done work for him in other schools. He's been happy with it. So. The only what? objection I have is the advanced energy group has misspelled Waitley twice on here. Wow. Every, I, I Only twice? That's pretty good. Once on the front, once on the back. I mean, just, when we change the zip code, we should just change the spelling of the town. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> no. Nah. I, I move that we uh, vote to approve this proposal on contract. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Very good. I think we're going to be out of here by eight. <gasps> So next item under new business to discuss and vote whether to approve a proposal slash contract from Alliance Energy Solar. 
for the installation of a solar array with battery storage at the town offices, then that would be paid with uh, municipal vulnerability preparedness. If you could read the whole proposal, you won't see our Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Uh, did they ever get back to us, Tom? So um, I did receive an email today with an apology that they don't have the contract um, fully completed yet. Um, they said they had the, the text of the body of the contract, but it's not yeah. the full contract, so right. it doesn't really help. Um, but what we could vote on is is the um, the vote to award. Oh, the okay. Bid to, uh, and then we have to vote on that contract when it's available. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I sent out the proposal. I um, just a little background. So. Um, uh, myself, Joyce, and Paul Newland from yep. the Energy Committee reviewed the one proposal that we received from Ace Solar, um, and the law requires that we bring the rate the proposal. Obviously, that's more important when you have more than one. Um, but in this case, we thought every, everything looked looked good. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was one I thought place where I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I had thought that. Uh, there weren't inverters readily available that would work with three phase, and this building uses yeah. three phase power. But they do. They have three. They, these folks have done projects that are big enough for institutions and companies and groups that have to use the three phase power. So there are three phase power. So that allows inverters. the battery backup. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that we can use the battery backup to power things yeah. in this building that are on the three phase power. Which is yes, which I, I was we were worried about having to do something that was like complicatedly hybrid, but that turned out not to be yeah. the the case. Yeah, that we won't be stumbling block. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we and so after we created the proposal, we set up a meeting with with a solar representatives, and we really had a good discussion of yeah. that was one of the one of our concerns, and it was a really good discussion. It wasn't about we can't do it; it was about sort of how much backup, you know. How much backup do you need? If you want five days without, you know, with Big, minimal sun or three days with the sun, or it was just this sort of this long discussion about how can we do it, not that we can't do it. Right. Um, and so they they are willing to work with us um, in terms of the design. So what what we talked about doing is um, they they submitted two proposals essentially. One was system option one, which was with the batteries and the inverters, and the other one was with no batteries. Um, so the committee more so. recommended yeah. the, the battery one, the PV system option one. Um, and what will happen is the contract would, that we would enter into with them uh, would be for PV system option one. But as they get into the design phase of the um, design phase of the project, which they won't start until they have a contract, um, when they come out and do you know the site visit and they, they start looking at the building, um, there may be the opportunity for some change orders um, and they'll start pricing out different options so um right. you know if i don't know five days with with no sun battery you know without batteries is super expensive then we have the ability to ship either direction or it's really cheap we'll go seven days yeah. like so there's a lot of uh, movement that yeah. we can do once the contract is signed so. yeah and um depending on how where the prices land and how we decide to finance it because it's eligible for uh ira funding um, it could be that we opt for a little bit bigger system. The, they set, they sent in two different, uh, and, and I think it's in the packet, two different pictures of the roof. One with a certain amount of solar and a battery. And they said, but what if you only did solar and no battery? And they squeezed a whole bunch of more panels on the roof. So the... It's possible that if it would, if that's what it would take to make uh, the system have as much backup power as, or more backup power. There we go. So there was one. Uh, this one is the more crowded one, I believe. Yeah. Um, and where it's got sort of four rows, but not all the rows are complete because you've got a yes um, uh, on the, the main part and then two rows on the bottom. And then I think it's one or uh, one or two pages. Before this one, yeah, there'll be a similar layout, um, which just has three rows, less interruption up at the top. 
but so we could get more power out of the roof. Um, there wouldn't be something where we could do this and then come back in a couple of years and say, oh, could you put those extra panels up? Um, but at this point, this would probably serve us better because it would give us uh, at least some power. And then one possibility is if we need a bigger battery and or more solar, we could look into IRA funding to help make that system do what we would like it to do. And I but, might have misunderstood you. Does the option with fewer solar panels include the battery backup, and the option with more does not include? As it's written up here. As it's written up here. Yeah. But we could do option number two, more panels and battery. That would be a possibility. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Wanted to know if we're I mean, it would, it would, yeah. it would be, he, they were sort of looking at what, what was our grant. Yeah. And if you're going to do it with the battery, this blend made sense. Yeah. Okay. If you were not going to do the battery, the larger number of panels made, made sense. sense. Okay. Yep. So it, uh, it would depend on, on how we could finance it. Assuming that that's something we, I mean, they, they come back and, uh, you know, it will depend on what they come back with. Right. Yes, we needed information and costs. Yeah. It's great that we could consider a battery backup because I know that really was a huge stump of concern. Yeah. 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 So today the motion would be to um, award. Yeah, award the bid. Award the bid. Okay. My move that we award the bid to Alliance Clean Energy Solar pending a full proposal and contract. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Last item I have new business. Um, uh, to discuss more inclusive ways to operate town meetings to ensure that all attendees have the opportunity for meaningful participation. So um, let's see, I'll go ahead and start on this and then mm -hmm. folks can, can add in, just the folks who are watching. Um, we got some feedback from uh, at least one resident who was uh, quite disappointed that the town meeting was uh, operated without reading the warrant articles. And that the first uh, motion that we did, that one was read, but the second motion, the moderator allowed uh, someone who came up just before the meeting started. Um, this was not planned in advance and, and asked, could we do like we did last year and uh, uh, dispense with the reading of the motions and just move the articles by number? Um, and they said, you know, it's, it's such a waste of time to be reading all that and that uh, besides saving time, everybody's got it in front of them and people have had it for, you know, a week now. Um, could we dispense with that? And so the the moderator allowed that to go up for a vote. There was not a lot of discussion about it, and it passed with pretty much everybody in the room, in the room, on the lawn, <laughs> um, in favor of it. Um, I myself was sort of ambivalent um, about whether to read it or not. I mean, I kind of like reading them, but um, I do understand that it does take time, and we're sometimes pressed for time. Uh, so I ended up voting in favor of that. Um, but the uh, person who wrote us said, well, there's a couple of problems. One is this may not really be ADA compliant, and that's something we have to look into. Um, folks with disabilities that involve uh, you know, reading or um, you know, being able to uh, read quickly in real time, maybe um, might be counting on the articles being read to understand what's going on. Um, they may need it to be heard rather than just in writing. Uh, so that's one thing. If you prepare way in advance, you can certainly get like an assistive reading device and so on so that you could be really well prepared. But most people don't do a lot of prep for town meeting, I don't think. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people might look over the Warren articles and, and then show up, um, which is great. But it does mean that uh, if people are showing up and expecting that we'll read the articles, then they actually have the time while you're reading the articles to uh, to think about it and understand it a little bit better, and then 
have questions. So we just like move article number, whatever. Uh, and then, uh, well, is there any discussion of article number, whatever? <laughs> then people could be frantically trying to read it to figure out, do they have any questions or discussion about article, well, whatever? And it could be and saying, can you read it to me? I'm <laughs> I have right degeneration and I can't read it. Right, right. And so that it, it might be that it's a disservice to perhaps a minority, but I don't know that it's a minority of people. Um, partly because there wasn't that much discussion of it. Mm -hmm. Right. There when they asked for discussion of that motion, not a lot of people raised their hand. There was clearly a lot of people that wanted it uh, because they proposed it. Um, so anyhow, we got some feedback. And uh, it seems like um, this might be something to reconsider at future meetings. The town meeting is, is the moderator's meeting. The moderator has a lot of control over how it goes. Uh, but uh, we can certainly, you know, if this were to come up today, if we have another town meeting today, I'm not sure that I would be as quiet as I was the other day. And I might. Yeah, because because uh, the input I got, you know, really made me think. Yeah, I, really, yeah. I very much appreciated the email that we got from the resident. If uh, I have a parent and at least one good friend with macular degeneration who need reading assistance or couldn't sit in a town meeting and read uh, the warrants themselves, the warrant articles themselves, and I really appreciated that she brought it to our attention. And we do need to be eighty eight. I, I also think it would be much better for anyone who's watching at home not to be able to. <laughs> That's true, too. I mean, yes. yes, theoretically, they have access by computer to the warrant articles, but if they're watching and haven't thought in advance to print it out, they're sitting there going Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, and they have right. no idea what we're talking about. Yeah. And I understood that it was in the uh, interest of saving time. However, the majority of the articles were several sentences long. Yeah. And it would not have taken that much time to at least read yeah. them out and give you know people in the audience a little more of a foothold about what we're actually discussing right and, here. And in the past, we've read out the articles, yeah. but yeah. we don't read out all of Article 8 and 9, which are the water department and the budget. Yeah. Yeah, right. Those, those can be front right. Back. Often the and, and the other one that comes under the category is sometimes um, articles related to like changes in the bylaws, things the planning right. board brings up. Right, are often things that we give a synopsis of rather than um, reading I, every last. I think it would be useful on most articles just to read them, and on the mm -hmm. lengthier ones, we can do a synopsis, and that would be yeah. yeah. You know, if there are any questions on exact wording, then we can go more deeply into that. Yeah, I think that's great. But again, that's not our department. It's, it's the moderator's job we can suggest if yeah. we feel. And we can, and we, I think our voice counts at town meeting as much as anybody else's. Well, yeah, yeah but the other thing mm -hmm. we could do if we felt strongly about something and had to put it back to the moderator, we can pass a bylaw as far as how town meeting is done. Yeah. That I mean, I mean, the town meeting can pass a bylaw yeah, right. about how we can't pass the bylaw, but right. we could right. propose one. We can propose it, and we would have to if there's something we want to be sure was a permanent feature. Yeah. And if we want citizens to sit at town meeting and vote knowledgeably, we need mm -hmm. to be able to give them yep. as much right. information as possible and really welcome the participation of everybody. So first of all, I want to say thank you to the person who wrote us and that we're open to that. We're open to yeah. what what helps you be more participatory in the town. You know, I also when I when I read that, it was like, you know, we I, <laughs> I as the person who who puts together the warrant and stuff, I don't I don't put in I don't think to put any of that language like if you need accommodations, please, you know. And now I'm going to put it at the bottom of all the agenda. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, like like. We can provide those services. We need a little bit of advance notice to be able to do it, but we should make that known that that's certainly a possibility that if mm -hmm. people need it, mm -hmm. any sort of uh, reasonable accommodations in terms of communication and at, at annual town meeting, to please reach out. Please reach out to me um, mm -hmm. so that we can make those services available. And like I said, town meeting this year, we we got this proposal or. 
Yeah, Mo motion sort of last minute, didn't really yeah. have time to think about the implications fully. Yeah. And it went through. And if we had more time to think about it and had the discussion beforehand, probably would not have done it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we might not have been, we might have been outvoted. Right. But, <laughs> but, uh, but I, yeah. I, 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 said I would not have been in favor of it had I had more time to think right. about it. Right. Yeah, I, Same I, I agree. For more information. Um, okay. All right. Learn. Well, now that's out there, then people can know. Um, anybody have anything else they want to add on that? No. no. Okay. We don't see anybody raising their hands on the Zoom. Okay. Select board liaison updates. So maybe we'll start. Got you you nothing. got nothing? I have something. We had a board of oversight meeting today. Um, the town of Sunderland had been contacted by Oxford University Press, which has a little facility, uh, an office in Sunderland, and they've decided they don't need most of their offices. Pandemic taught them that they don't need offices to do their work anymore. Uh, so they're trying to sell this facility, and they've been in contact, they've gotten in contact with the Sunderland town offices um, and we went into the tour there because as uh, as office space it might make an ideal kind of space for a senior center. I was going to say it's a gorgeous building. I have a friend who used to be employed there. It's lovely. It is. It's can, lovely. Can you detail that? Do you have an address? Well, yes, it's it's a uh, 42 Plum Tree Lane. So to me, the, the only well, you shouldn't lead with the thing you don't want, but I'll do that anyway because because I trust you guys. The only thing I don't like about it is its location. It is in southern Sunderland, so it's uh, if you're going to Amherst, it's there. It's 15 minutes from my house if I get on the highway. Mm -hmm. So my house is on Westbrook Road near Chestnut Plain Road, so the Hatfield line, and you're sort of going up over that bridge and then down to Sunderland to the Amherst line. It's off of 116. Um, and that was 14 minutes. If I got on the highway, I bet it would have been would have been less than 20 had it been um, uh, had I had I just taken the regular roads, dealt with stop signs and so on. Um, it's only five minutes from like the current place, or four minutes maybe from the current place in Sunderland. Uh, it's, it's not very. It's really not that far from. The other locations that our seniors are having to travel to anyway. Um, and it has the disadvantage that, like, if, if we had something that was in the center of town, people would walk to a restaurant locally or walk to one of the little shops, either in the center of Deerfield, center of Sunderland, wherever that might be. So, it, those are the, to me, the only disadvantages, but the advantages are, are huge, I think. The, the space is new it's in good shape uh it's had lots of renovations um it's got land such that you could you could do like a lot of picnicking outside it's got an enclosed courtyard mm -hmm. uh with uh brick and stone that they had just recently replaced um it has a kitchen that would do for the kind of meals we want to do at the, uh, the senior center it would take a minimal amount of work to convert uh, some of the offices into like a larger, say, seating area for eating. Um, it would take a bit more work to convert some spaces to like, mostly getting rid of lawn load there and walls to make a place where you could like have a yoga class or something like that. Um, so this, anyways, this has come to the attention of the uh, the folks in Sunderland just recently. So we went down to look at it um, and. My understanding is that uh, that that feasibility study that Deerfield got seventy five thousand dollars for um, that they're going to put as another point in the scope of work for whoever's doing the feasibility study to look at that building as well mm -hmm. um, as an option to kind of get an idea. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, and contrast. compare and contrast, and like how much would it cost? Somebody would have to purchase the building. Mm -hmm. um, and presumably that's one of the three towns and the one that makes the most sense is Sunderland since it's in Sunderland. Um, it's probably bigger than we need for a senior center. So it has lots and lots of beautiful office space. 
So uh, if one of the towns were in need of office space, and they think we're not going to use Sunderland, that that would be a, a place to have excess office space. Um, and I think they they might be a little cramped over there at the old school building that they're using. So it might be something that also uh, helps them with their municipal side. Um, so as with these sort of things, I don't have an answer as to whether, like, I don't know what the price is. I think the assessment is something like a million dollars. Um, and uh, so I don't know how that would relate to a sale price. Uh, I don't know if they're amenable to renting. Um, I think if we're going to really do this, though, long term, you don't own the building. So, but it's very, uh, it's very nice inside um, and out. Lot, plenty of parking. Um, the distance is, well, I think, yeah, you, you, you have to, if that were to be something that looked like it could work out economically, then we would really want to work on um, the, you know, we'd, we'd have to really figure out how far, how long does it take to get there from, let's say, Paul Newland's house, right there on the corner of Conway Road, and, um, not Dickinson Hill Road, um, the other hill road, Poplar, Poplar Hill Road, uh, up there. I think, oh, so people knew, well, what does it take to get from his house? Everybody knows where they live next to him. Or it's just some various landmarks in town. And we can say, how long does it take to get there in a car? Um, and then they're also working a lot. They know that transportation is a problem. Mm -hmm. So they have a van and sometimes they're working out, signing up to pick people up. That's a uh, that's something that's more a function of how many people do we have working there and uh, able to drive the van and help transport people. Uh, but they, I mean, there are pro there are potential solutions to transportation problems, and the transportation problems may not be as big as we sometimes think they are, um, because like as I just jumped in my car, plugged in the address, it's like fourteen minutes, really? I'm gonna hold you to that. I said to my mm -hmm. car's navigation system. Okay. And, it, and it got me there in 14 minutes cool. uh, because I took the path it told me instead of the path that goes through town where I had stop signs and stuff. As far as transportation problems, if, if they're relying more on the van, are there going to be insurance issues for the senior center or for the towns? Will it have liability yeah. as far as transporting more uh, people on uh, a regular yeah. basis? Uh, I mean, I'll, I mean, they, they have already insurance, right? So there is insurance already for the for the van they have. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason they have the van is because Hatfield gave it to us. Uh, it doesn't carry wheelchairs, for example. So uh, that, that's getting into like further further down the road yeah. on, on things. But we know one of the biggest problems for seniors is when you can't drive right. and you need rides to medical appointments and so on. Yeah, I'm just thinking if the insurance would change if there was greater reliance and yeah. greater use of Great. Oh, like of the van. Yeah, is the insurance condition like mileage? Mileage or number of passengers yeah. or average? That I don't know. I don't know. But a feasibility study will help us figure out. It, and I think there's a there's a uh, there's a lot of um, improvement that comes with having a central location. Um, and if the staff is constantly moving things from one place to the other, they're not doing the programming and the things that we want them to do. Uh, for the seniors. It's also because it's so much bigger, um, it, it's the potential for being able to do some of the things that we heard in the survey, mm -hmm. where people wanted other kind of services that are not necessarily associated with, with old age. Um, um, so that was, uh, it, it would be a place that we could grow into mm -hmm. uh, in that sense. Um, as, as long as it's not in, you know, much, much too big, the Things will yeah. expand to meet the space available. Yeah. You know, we don't need a 12 story building. Right, but. right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, is, is this a, a potentially good new uh, location for us to check out? And um, I was pleasantly, um, I guess, I don't know, not pleasantly surprised. I was happy to hear that it would be easy to add this as a one little point in the scope of work on the feasibility study. And then, so maybe having some information sooner rather than later uh, to be able to say, hey, 
um, this will work. It's estimated to cost such and such. You're going to need a lead community uh, or whatever structure you're going to need to purchase it and divide the cost equitably. Um, I can't imagine that it's going to cost us less than what we're doing now. <laughs> but absolutely, uh, cost is going to be an investment in our communities, though. And that would be uh, something we got to decide whether we want to make that investment or not. It, and, may, uh, it may involve doing some other form of survey. Are you, you know, especially for people in Wakely, would have a greater travel, are you more likely or less likely to use a facility yeah. for Sunderland than at Deerfield? Right. Um, that's yeah, yeah, and uh, but you would also pair that with um, how long does it take to get there from the center of Deerfield, um, or from places where we currently offer service? Yeah. Um, how long does it take to get there from Waitley Town Hall? Sure. From Waitley Town, what was it from Waitley Town offices? Seven minutes? Uh, nine minutes, nine minutes, nine minutes. Yeah, yes. yeah. Those but, I, yeah. but as far as allocating costs for usage, whether we would have decreased usage would Sunderland have increased usage given that yeah. it's there and have you yeah. well, one worked is, that into uh, an allocation of costs? One of the Sunderland funny I thought they said well people from northern Sunderland are going to think this is awful and that they have to go so far <laughs> and it's like yeah people will always find something but yeah. they have to go to Deerfield now so yeah yeah <laughs> what's easy what struck me Joyce and I were talking in this, this library reading room part with the senior center director. And I, I guess it, it struck me when I was sitting there that that because it's such a nice place, and if you could have, if they could have programs, you know, I don't want to drive 10 minutes to be there for 20 minutes and then drive 10 minutes back, right? Mm -hmm. But if I I might drive 20 minutes to stay there for three hours, mm -hmm. you know, so if there's programs that, I mean, it was, it, it was a beautiful space. It was a beautiful yeah. building. It's it way better than anything yeah. that can be, oh, it is this a, is my opinion, except it pleasant. Could be done with the church. And I mean, this is, I would drive very far to go to this right. place. The, yeah. it, you're, you're right. And, and there, the, the limits on what programming they have, some of the artificial constraints they have, I should say constraints really is the right word. Um, about like when you were renting the church hall in Deerfield, you know, and if you've got, um, you know, a bingo going on and then you got something else loud going on, you can't really have those things happening at the same time. But if you have them in different rooms in different parts of this building, you can have programs going on simultaneously. Right now they have, don't have, they have any things that happen at the same time. So at any given time, there might be one activity. And if you don't like that one, <laughs> if it's not, you know, but you know, you can imagine go over for a yoga class in the morning. You can stay for lunch, you have your laptop, and, and go to, take go to the lap. library room, and yeah, yeah. and then and go to your yoga class after that, and maybe arts after lunch. And right, it was There's, like a place where people might want to be and spend yes. a lot yes. of time. It's a very welcoming. It's yeah, yeah. I, I, I you take spend it, the day there. I take it doesn't have lead remediation of asbestos or lead paint. Uh, <laughs> Oh, no. It has big shady trees shading the place where the cars are. So you can even park in the shade, you know, and you're, so you can go out and your like your car is a million degrees if you're driving. Um, wow. the, there's plenty of room for the food pantry. And it, and I agree that the it's just a pleasant yeah. place, even though it was like full of boxes and right. empty shelves and things because they're moving out of there. Yeah. <laughs> It, uh, it was just beautiful. Yeah, I want to move to the town offices there. <laughs> oh, so maybe we need to be the lead. Can we buy that? We can do the zip code anyways. I know. What are you saying? We have the wrong zip code. Well, anyway. Why not uh, have the way we can send them a zip code? <laughs> but I thought it was a great yeah. building. I mean, the walls Location that even come down are not cinder block. They're, I mean, like in this building, we're limited to some extent what we can do because there's so much cinder block. Um, that's true where I work as well. We're doing a lot of renovation there. And center block is the thing that usually <laughs> makes things come to a halt or just makes them really expensive to do. Um, and there, uh, cool. But anyway, that I'm I'm excited about it. Um, and I am hoping we're going to have information about it really soon because of that 
So we can sneak it into that feasibility study. They were going to put that out for bids uh, sometime in the next week or two, it sounded like. They were going to start having a meeting about the bid. The person who writes up their bids uh, is about ready to write up ours. So that's uh, that we may have more on that coming up. Uh, so I was very excited about that. Um, is there anything else? I guess I'm the liaison to the police department. We did interview two officers today. And uh, um, so there, things are moving along on the hiring of the two full time police officers. Well, cool. I think that's all I have to report. Okay. Um, there was a meeting with me and Brian and folks from uh, who own the Waitley Diner, Gloria. Uh -huh. Brian, is the, is there any advancement on that yet, or should we table that for discussion another time? Uh, we're looking at redevelopment here. Yeah, I think that's time. probably where we should. Yeah. yeah. No, so they think yeah. it's gone. So just the news. Yeah, yeah they have interest in in renovating or upgrading the oh, yeah, area, exactly. which was timely. So oh, like the charging stations, talking. I hope, will feature in that. Is that just for the what diner, the whole, the, their whole property, the whole property. Yeah. yeah. So the Roberts. And, yeah. So everything. Okay. And we're sort of talking about that in conjunction with what we might do north of 116. Uh, the, yeah, the whole exit from the side of the building. The that's the that's the southern sort of major to, property. Of yeah. That how not to be du duplicating things and how to work, how to work together to actually make a bunch of good development that will. Oh, well, that's good. You know, all I really want are like good charging stations. <laughs> well, and I, I guess I, I do another. I think they're aware of. I think yeah. they're, they're probably aware of that, that need, except they're very fossil fuel focused. Yeah. At this time, still, I would believe. So, yeah. 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 Yeah.
kind of mm -hmm. passes passes prime. Um, eventually, there's they're talking about you know some type of play structure for kids. Um, all of these items should be CPA eligible, um, but you know to, to keep working on that part to make it yeah. a place where people want to be. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's talk about moving the now that the the park lot is paid, moving the um, skating rink. Oh, winter down to the far end of the parking lot. Oh, um, so that they can set up those two skating rinks, um, and it'll be easier. It's one of the problems why they couldn't why they couldn't set it up for so long is that um, when you put it on the ground, if the ground's not frozen, then it's sort of then you put the water in the rink. Mm -hmm. The ground sort of insulates it; it doesn't let it freeze. But if you have the cold parking lot underneath, then it, then they can put out the skating rink water earlier. And, oh, uh, so it does better on pavement. Yeah. I wouldn't have expected yeah, that for like yeah. the black pavement. I'm assuming Wayne knows what he's talking about. But, but I, yeah. well, it, yeah. it might be more of an insulator and not be as well connected to the ground. The ground could still be the same temperature as up there, yeah. but th that insulation uh, would mean the water could freeze. The pavement insulating it from the yeah. warm ground, right, or something like that. Yeah. Um, so that we'll talk about that, and obviously. Now it's much easier to plow than it used to be. So, I mean, cross country skiing or snowshoeing around the park. I mean, yeah. we're going to we have that parking lot cleared up, offering yeah. the town to plow it at this point. But, um, but I mean, it'll be a yeah. possibility. It'll increase the winter recreation there. Bathrooms would probably still be closed because they're not well insulated. They're not heated. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But so right. um, that's wrapping up Hayden Road Reconstruction Project. 75% uh, design was submitted by the engineer for Mass DOT. Yeah. Um, yeah. April. I'm still, I'm still trying to track down a copy. <laughs> um, but I know it's been submitted to Mass Doc. Um, and I know that the the impacts to Article 97 have been reduced, but not eliminated. So uh -huh. we'll still have to go through that process with the city of Northampton at some level to try to get okay. that hand released. Um, employment vacancies. So um, like Joyce said, we interviewed. Uh, uh, two individuals for the two full-time officer positions for the police department. Um, they had another additional interview administrative assistant position um, that we haven't, um, I'm still sort of thinking that through, and we haven't had any, really any other additional interest in the community development position. So again, I think I just need to put some more thought in, now the town meeting's over, to put some more thought into Mm. How it might, if there's some way to combine those two positions or something to make them more attractive or the or the pay more attractive. Um, but I'll need to think about that a little bit more. Um, gap three scope of work. So this is a small grant um, to install a solar array at the main pump house at the off of Chestnut Plain Road for the water department. Um, we're still I'm still reviewing the scope of work. Um, with the agency for that. Um, uh, complete street procurement. Um, so this is, we've had this grant for a while. Um, uh, complete streets. So this is the finishing, completing the uh, sidewalks along Chestnut Plain Road. Um, some safety improvements, so the intersection realignment um, improvements to uh, Conway Road and Weber Weber Road? Road. Williamsburg Road, Williamsburg Road, oh. and then Conway Road, and the still Williamsburg Road, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Conway Road was Conway Road. Conway Road and Williamsburg Road meet at basically at Paul Newland's house, at, and, and then the other deep, side, right? right, right yeah, and then yeah. the other side of his house, it's got Weber Road yeah. and Conway Road. Okay, more or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's two of those intersections. One of them is definitely Conway Road. Um, <laughs> and the, and the other this project has been awarded for so long, and yeah, we've been waiting on the engineering. Um, so there's intersection improvements, and then there's the project to extend the sidewalk at the elementary school. Um, so those were um, those are going to go off to bid, and hopefully those will be summer late summer projects. Um, okay, housing production plan. Um, I believe Burcock staff is finalizing that plan, um, and that'll be sent over to the planning board and select board for review um, and for 
And the last one is future planning projects. And again, I feel like we've had these grants for forever. Um, master plan update, um, grant project that we have. Um, we contracted for cost to do that. And we're also uh, incorporating the municipal digital equity planning um, as part of that master plan update. Um, that was sort of a separate uh, grant funding that, that, that we received for that. Um, yeah, that's that's. So I'm just, just, I, 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 I've, I've got one question from Nine Wood. Any contact from MassDOT on the Chestnut Plain um, dump or whatever it is? Um, oh, the. Uh, they, not recently. I, the said, debris. Yeah. The last time I followed up with them, they said that they um, they had done some testing. It wasn't clear if it was testing of the fill. Mm -hmm. It wasn't clear which location the testing of the fill was done. But it's time to follow back up with them because I'll follow back up with them and, and include our uh, our elected representative. Yeah, our state representative. The one, on the responsive one. Um, yeah, I would follow up with both. But, yeah. Yeah. No, I'll include that. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Just check in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you have anything you want to add there? No. Or, yes. there, um, I just want to. Oh. Do you want to talk about meeting times? Because Joyce. Oh. So, so Joyce will be in Sweden oh. for a while, right? Right. Oh, and I'll be so in for I'll, a while. I'll say this. So at six o'clock, we have a meeting at six o'clock, it will be midnight in Sweden. Yeah. And I'm choice has done before. So I'm willing to do it. Um, but it, I and I don't know if summertime, I think one of the things that's good about having the meeting in the evening is that more people can come. I think in general, more people work during the day and then either can zoom in or or something for a topic yeah. they'd like. Um, or that they want to, to be there for. So I, I, I'm fully willing to uh, to keep the time. We what could. is the date of when you will be in all of and... All of June, July, and most of August. Oh, wow, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, um, um, yeah. uh, but uh, I, anyway, so we, it, it's an opportunity if we want to, to experiment with uh, starting our meetings earlier in the mm -hmm. afternoon. It's not something I can do during the regular semester. It would be a summertime thing. Because um, it's just uh, my job won't let me do that during uh, basically from September through the end of May. I can but, certainly experiment starting I, earlier. I, I, I yeah, I, I, I feel moving earlier than you said. Yeah. Yeah, there are several times where I'm going to be away. I'm going to be away June 22nd through July 4th. Okay, so that's um, that's missing the June 27th meeting. Okay. Yeah. And then again, July 22nd through 29th, which means the first meeting on the 25th, I guess that is the one. And then August 19th, up through 19th. Okay. And I don't have all upcoming select board meetings in my calendar. That's not what we're Yeah. Well, Except the 13th. Yeah. So if we were, if we were second and last Tuesdays, It'd be July 4th. Uh, no, it would be July 11th and 25th. Right. Um, so you're potentially missing the second meeting in June, the second meeting in July. There are many times when we've only had one meeting in August in the past. Um, uh, but yeah, like often when we get closer, we kind of look at it and say, how much stuff is on our plate? Can we go three weeks between meetings instead? Uh, so it's often the case that we, the meeting schedule is irregular. Right. Uh, keeping the same date. Um, Ryan, will there figure to be anything we need to do before uh, at a specifically June 27th meeting for the end of fiscal year? 
I know sometimes there, there are things that need to be done. Uh, I, um, well, I mean, we'll have to do the, the fiscal year 24 appointments. In the finance. And the reserve fund transfers over the finance. Right. Is, is there any special town meeting need? <clears throat> Because reserve fund transfers don't require special boundaries. Could July and August meetings I could zoom in? Hmm. Could June meeting I could? Both good. So then I and then I guess the question would be if it's changed in time, change to five p.m. to the four p.m. change. So we're just keeping it at 6 p.m. That's good. I'm happy to change to five more or yeah, I have to choice really. I would say your call whether and you have a two-hour meeting, we're talking at two in the morning now. <laughs> morning. Yeah, yeah. If it's at four p.m., then that's 10 that's to midnight. 10. Uh, which is easier, manageable. which is easier for me than than midnight. Um, wow, that's some salmon up here from midnight to two. <laughs> well, hey, I, I know it can be done because I've done it before. Um, well, could we try this out for the June meetings and see how it goes? And then try, try 4 p.m. Yeah. Sure. For the two June meetings. And I think that's also, in a way, that's easier on staff too, right? Um, Assuming that there'll be some AC in here for you guys in the yeah, summer. My office is pretty kind. I think we're fine. Yeah. Right, Amy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're yeah. covering big staff. <laughs> my office stays cool. I don't get the direct sound. So, oh, yeah. It's the town park and treasure collector that's out for the post. Oh, I see. Wait, what day is it? The June meeting? I've got June 13th. And June 27th. So June 13th is our election day. Right. So somebody else would have to take your role here. We would be using this one. So you would have to meet. Yeah, they have to. We have to meet Ryan's office. Yeah. Okay, so the there. Mm -hmm. we, we can we can either meet you know. Yeah. Or okay. can we or push the meeting to Thursday instead of Tuesday of that week? Yeah, all days are the same for me, really. So if we were to make it June fifteenth, we'd all, we'd have the election results by then. And right. Do the reorganization mm -hmm. board. Right. Exactly. Or uh, there. Looks like that would work for me too. Okay. So why don't would the fifteenth work for you, Brian? Is that? Um, the, instead of the thirteenth. At four o'clock, that's going to be chopped. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't think the 15th will work. Okay, 14? Five o'clock. <laughs> well, my son has a school play at oh. 2 15 on Thursday. Oh, oh that's just probably trying to get. Yeah. Okay, we can't meet at his school. You could. <laughs> we'll just have, well, quietly. We could. Right. Well, I'll just have to zoom in. Yeah. Oh, guys, with zooming in, it is, it is nice to have this. Set up here. So and then uh, Wednesdays be, don't always work for you. Does the fourth? Does that Wednesday work for you? Uh, if we do it at four, and if we're definitely out by six, yes. Okay, okay. I think that can happen. Okay, and then we figure for the fourteenth. For the fourteenth then at four o'clock. Okay, could be Joyce last meeting and start pushing it. <laughs> With the, this could be it. Yeah, could be it. Yeah. Could be, but unless you bring the ball. I, unless right. I'm a, <laughs> if I'm reelected, there will be another year when I'm chair. That's true. So, yeah. okay. To look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to figure out who to give the darn tongue report award to. So, yeah. Better change the Okay. All right. Sounds like we've got all of this okay. stuff sorted out. I thought I heard a motion. Yeah, move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We'll see you January 6th.